That's it. That's the last scoop. There she goes. Now is her 1,500 ounces in Lucifer. Should be really close. On the airstrip, Mitch and the crew race to shut down Slucifer to avoid Tony's higher rate royalties. There it is. And kickstart Parker's plan to get two wash plants on the gold. Hey, bud. Hi, Mitch. How are you? Not too bad. Breaking her down and getting her moving. Right on. Good job getting that cut done. I know it was an absolute and we're all glad to see it done. 100%. Thank but you. You guys did a good job. Here's to Kevin Stewart. Woo! Get everybody uh, on the road. All right. Let's do it. Let's move some out of the way. Let's go. They've got just four hours until the night shift to get Slucifer hauled and running on the promised land. And they'll have to cross a culvert made of rusting 50-year-old dredge pontoons. This wash plant is big, it's heavy. It would not be good to be fishing out this wash plant. The combined weight of Slucifer and the low boy is 85 tons. We just want to take it slow and steady. Oh, that's a lot of leaning. Go, man. Go, go, go. She's leaning hard. When you get lined up on that culvert, man, just don't stop. There's no way of knowing how much the bush-fixed culvert can hold. I'm gonna hang back here. On Indian River. Go for it. Parker's crew are on a mission. They've got four hours to haul Slucifer to the promised land across a bush-fixed bridge. Good luck, man. Come on, go, 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 go. Oh, yeah, like a dream. Looking good, boys. We're almost there. I love it when a plan comes together. But they won't be washing rocks. Keep going. Keep going. Almost there. Until they've put Parker's $600,000 wash plant back together. That'll do it. Watch your backs. Here we go. The last thing we want to do is have anything go wrong. So we're just going to be nice and gentle with her, and we'll get her into place. That'll work. You guys are moving. They've hit their deadline, but Parker's got news. I'd like our first full shift to be a day shift, just because everything's fresh. Yeah, for sure. Did you say <laughs> What's <laughs> Well, you don't know if until you fire it up. If anything's it's because you Exactly. If Parker's going to make it out of survival mode, he'll need a big payday from Ken's claims. Last season, they pulled over four and a half million dollars from the promised land. Let's see if we can get this thing washing rocks. Sounds good. Nice job. In the battle for ground, Parker's plan is in play, and he's back on the gold. Nice job, man. There it is. Yeah, man, I'm stoked.
happening, Chris? Hey, Mitchell. How's it going? Oh, it is finally done. Now that Parker's got his plan rolling, he needs to find out if he's hit his 1,500-ounce target. That was quite the week. Yeah. It's the Yukon. No matter where you go, you're going to battle something. But at least we got a wash plant down there. Well, you guys, we're, we were hoping for 1,500 ounces in yeah. the suit we got. You got the big jar out. <laughs> Let's see it. To hit 1,500, Parker needs 180 ounces. 20. But any more will mean a big payday for Tony. 100, 120, 140, 150, 160. We're make it. 170. Let's stop right here, right? 180. Oh, there's the 190. 180. 200, 210, 220, 240, 260, 270, 276.05. Worth over $496,000, minus an $83,000 royalty for Tony. Nice. Well, we yeah. got the 180. Yeah, that's right. So. 97 <laughs> ounces over. Yeah. I'll take it. Tony gets to make a little bit more, but hey, we made a little bit more, so right. that's the way she works. That brings Parker's season total to 1,597 ounces, worth almost $2.9 million. Still 900 ounces less than this time last year. No, I know that was not the most fun situation for you guys to be in. Yeah. Um, and I thank you for getting it done. A few days, we'll have two plants running, and then it'll be real fun. Yeah. Good. Well, see you guys later. Right. See you guys later. Fun. Later. See you guys. At last, Parker's season is turning a corner. Everybody did a good job. You know, it wasn't a good scenario, <laughs> no matter how you played it. And Mitch and Tyson made the most of it, which is good. They got the job done, and it's really nice. As I give up more and more space, they take more and more ownership over everything and, and just do a really good job with it. This season, we're definitely having to take some bigger risks. 26-year-old Parker Schnabel has spent eight years building his mining empire in the Klondike, but he's running out of ground. This season, the only new claim he could find is deeper than anything he's ever mined. Mud Mountain, I it's supposed to be really good gold, but it is 50 feet deep. Um, and some of it's 60 feet deep, and that's 40, 50 grand a day just doing stripping. And the bills keep coming in, and right now we're only sluicing at the airstrip. The gold's just not coming in that fast, so we definitely need to um, step it up. A mile away at the airstrip, Parker puts foreman Mitch Blaschke in charge with his skeleton crew. This ground's thawed out. It's ready to go through the plant. It's just painfully slow coming back in here, you know, with the crew that we have. We've been running Slucifer 24-7. To pay for Mud Mountain, Parker needs to hit 1,500 ounces from the airstrip in the next three weeks. Feeding the plant is it's a big job. You got a timeline, you gotta keep going. It's non-stop. 30-year-old Tatiana Costa is one of Parker's rising new operators. She loads the pay dirt into Parker's only working wash plant, Slucifer. This year I feel good. I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm looking out for, I understand the, the plant, the conveyors, so I, I enjoy it. At the other end of the wash plant, Pascal clears the tailings. Hey, Pascal, how's everything looking over there? It's great, how about you? I think we really are doing a, a 
great job up here. Thanks, Tatiana. Let's crank it up. Okay, if that's what you want, you're the boss. Well, Parker wants us to crank up the plant, and uh, that means I got to get the right tool for the job. This little pair of pliers right here might not look like much, but this will control just how much uh, yardage we do with Slucifer. I took the knob off a couple years ago because we've had an issue with operators jumping out, you know, adjusting the feed rate, and it's just not quite right. Right now we're about 220 yards an hour. I'm gonna dial this knob here and we're shooting for 250. If you want more gold, you gotta take some chances. Tatiana, you got a copy? Yeah, copy. Can I hold up for a sec? Okay. Parker wants us to crank this thing up. Okay. We've been running 220 yards an hour. I just set it at 250, so okay, okay. you're going to have to pick up the pace here a bit. Okay, Roger All right. that. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Running 15% more pay should produce 15% more gold. Right now, we are in fifth gear, so just going super fast. But it also produces 15% more tailings. Oh, shoot. The tailings are starting to build up. I'm going to have to go help Pascal. It's just, this is absolutely crazy trying to keep it up overall. If the tailings build up, they will jam the conveyor and break the plant. We're as much as a team as we are a family up here. You know, if you can do a job, you do it. Last time I was in a loader was about two years ago. This thing's so big and scary. Yay, I see Doom it over there. So I can finally focus just uh, just here in the plant and uh, let Dumit help Pascal for now. That would be really nice. I could say getting back in the loader is like riding a bike, but I always used to fall off a bike, so we're not going to use that example. Oh, crap. Tatiana, Tatiana, shut down the plant, shut down the plant. They're all jammed up, free wash is loaded up, the dirt's filling out everywhere, girl. Hi, Dumit. Want some chips? Oh, no thanks. At the start of the week, Parker sped up the wash plant. Pushing dirt around. How's it going, man? Hey, young man. No, ma'am. Time to find out if his decision paid off. Hey, Mitchell. What's happening? Howdy, hi. I bet you were ready for that cigar there after your day in the loader. It's fun getting back into the thing, but I definitely know I was, I've been in a machine. Oh, yeah. It was a bittersweet. I say we throw some gold on the scales. You want to count out, Mitch? Yeah, I'll see what we got this week. Here we go. 50. To hit Parker's 1,500 ounce gold. 150. Slucifer needs 280 ounces a week. 280, 300. Still got some in there. 330, 350. 360, 376.20. Worth $677,000. Wow. Our best week. Yeah. Our best week so far. Yes. <laughs> I stand corrected. The best week so far. Yeah. Yeah. Smoking week. Well, that just goes to show more rocks means more gold. For the season, we broke 1,000. 1,032.65 ounces. Very nice, yeah. very nice. You look like an old bookie with that thing. I'm, I'm still a pencil and paper kind of guy. 
I'm going to dinner. Good no, job, guys. Good job, Chris. Thank Thanks, you. Thank, thank you, sir. I know it's not been fun, but we'll get there. Okay. Things will settle down. Let's go get some dinner. Yeah. All right, I'll bag this stuff up. Thanks, you guys. You did a great job. The gold at Mud Mountain is definitely looking better, but we already blown the budget out the window. So we'll see. Hopefully the gold continues. With just four weeks left of the season, 27-year-old Parker Schnabel has finally found the gold at Mud Mountain. Now, his team is running all out to cash in. Trying to get this stuff ready. As we've been working our way through Mud Mountain, the gold's been getting better. And it looks like this downstream end of it, just as the last piece that we strip, seems to have the best gold. I probably should know better than trying to rest most of your season on one cut, but who knows? Maybe it's there, maybe it's not. The other linchpin of Parker's season rests in the hands of plant boss Tyson Lee, who's running promised land ground four miles away. This time of year, we're making a huge push to grab every ounce of gold that we can. Down at Ken Stewart's, Tyson's still plugging away. It's going fast, you know, the, the bad cut. I think Ken's a little off on the naming of his cuts. The good cut did not do so good. The bad cut, doing better than the good cut. And the ugly cut, I don't know. You never know until it's in a jar. So Lucifer's going to be done in the bad cut and looking to move to the ugly. And the ugly is far from ready. So we have a lot of work to do, a lot of dirt to move. You know, this year we've been stretched thinner than any other year. And that's because of Mud Mountain and it being 60 feet deep. The ugly cut is nearly double the size of the bad cut. And with just four weeks left of the season, Tyson will have to double his production rate to mine it all. He has a radical new plan, if Parker will agree. Hey, man, how's it going? Good, how are you? Pretty good, thanks. What's going on? In this next plant pad setup, I was thinking of setting Slucifer up so, you know, normally we have the wash plant pad height being the same height as the wash plant. I'm thinking of setting the wash plant up on a pedestal. Let's say this is our wash plant pad, right? And this is where the wash plant would normally sit. I want to kind of stick it out here so the fines can travel around. The only comment I would have is if you we're going to have undermining issues, but if you've got lots of nice, big, coarse um, bedrock, then I trust your judgment. Right on. And whatever you can do to stay as self-sufficient as possible is the best thing for us, because we're spread so thin, as you well know. And I'm thinking if things work out the way I think it will, we should be able to get away with three guys on days and two on nights down there, and that'll free up another guy to be in a truck. I'm not going to say you're on your own down there, but act like you are until you need, <laughs> until you really need help. Right on. Well, I'll go get to her. Thanks, man. In a normal setup, tailings from the wash plant build up and the crew has to clear them. Tyson's plan? Use 40,000 tons of material to build a mega pad and allow the fine tailings to fall away from the plant, saving on time and crew. So right now we're trying to build our wash plant pad. My main concern was getting this wash plant pad done in time before Slucifer's done the bad cut. It's gonna look like a different planet down here in a week. Well, we're digging pay in uh, what they call it the bad cut, but really it turns out to be a good cut. I figure tomorrow will be a very close parking lot over here. Normally it takes us about a week to build the wash plant pad, and we started yesterday. Well, the pressure's on. Well, 
What's going on, Chris? Hey, Mitch. How's it going, man? Oh, not too bad. Good to see you, buddy. You too. Hey, T-Bird. How you doing, man? Not much. You? Clean and gold. Yeah? Non-stop. Time to find out if the last of the bad cut lived up to its name. Take your guess, Parker. What do you got? One... Ninety-two. Based on how he's holding it. 10, 20, 40, 60, 130, 160. He's over. 200. Ah. It's 220, <laughs> 240, 250, 277.05. That was way off. Oh, yeah. Worth just under half a million dollars. That's a good cleanup. Yeah, no kidding. It's your last of the bad cut, so now we gotta see what the ugly cut's gonna do, right? Yeah. Hopefully not hold up to its name. All right. Just the first of Big Red. Parker spent over $4 million getting down to pay in Mud Mountain after drill results showed it was four times richer than any other Indian River ground. I see you got two pans, damn it. So well, what are you trying to tell me? My scale goes up to 400 ounces. With the way Mud Mountain has been going, right here, you guys, is 400 ounces. Well, that's a good way to start. That's the first thermos. 400 on the dot. This is plus the 400. Let's see what we got on, on top of 400. 20, 40, 100, 130, 180, 196.6. For a total of 596.6 <laughs> ounces in that's one incredible. week. That's incredible. Wow. Worth over $1 million. We've been busy down here, let's put yeah, it that buddy. way. <laughs> I mean, just last week, Big Red had its best week it ever, did. and it just topped it. This is the best week of Red's history from day one. It's just wild how much like effort and stripping went into it and how fast you're getting through it. Every hour of sluicing probably represents a thousand dollars worth of stripping or something, yeah. right? Or two thousand dollars worth of stripping. For the week, you guys, believe it or not, it's 873.65 ounces, <laughs> jeez. Worth over one and a half million dollars, Parker's biggest gold way of this season. I never thought after last week we'd top what we just yeah. did, but it's a matter of if it'll hold out for long enough to make it worthwhile. Let's, let's do this again next week. Yeah, let's do yeah. it again a few and more again. times. Okay. A few more times, yep. Yeah. We'll try. Yep. Good job, guys, all three of you. This gnarly bedrock that we're pulling out, it's definitely not easy on our equipment. It's banging and crashing hard on the shaker deck. At Mud Mountain, Parker Schnabel's running bedrock, hoping it holds the $8 million in gold the drill results indicate is here. How's things here? It's pretty full. And with that bedrock, it packs worse too, huh? Yeah. Keep going. All this big bedrock, it's not easy on the whole wash plant. You can't really afford any more repercussions or downtime. Had, uh, way too much of it. Damn. As you can see, this motor's jumping all over the place. And the reason for that, this right here, this is a tensioner. This keeps this motor isolated. And uh, you can see it's broke. All the vibration and the rattling and energy that gets transferred through these machines running bedrock takes a toll on them. Oh man, she looks like it's been broke for a while. It must have just been rattling around in there and finally let loose. At Parker Schnabel's claim, Mud Mountain Bedrock has broken Big Red. So there's a bolt that runs through here. You can see it's just ripped its way out, and you can see it's kind of rusty on this side, so it must have been cracked for a bit here, but it finally broke all the way. 
with this not attached here, that motor can just jump around, do whatever it wants. A bolt holding the tensioner, which isolates the motor from the shaker deck, has broken loose from the steel plate it sits on. Mitch's fix, hoist the motor back into position. Realign the tensioner bolt and weld it back into the plate. Got to get the motor back in place so the belts stay on there, they stay tight, the shaker deck shakes, and this motor isn't jumping all over the place. So right now we've just got to get this back into position. And once we do that, then we can weld it up. So we've got to get that bolt lined right back up where it was there. Then we can polish it up and throw a weld on it. So right now we've got uh, the shaker motor back in place. We got the tensioner bolt put back where it needs to be. We're going to weld this thing back up. Once we do that, we'll take the clamps off. You know, Big Red's taking a a lot of abuse this season, and we got to keep it going. Once we do this, we can fire back up, and hopefully we can get through this pay dirt here from Mud Mountain before we have any more problems. Watch your eyes. Time to see if Tyson's weld holds. 30 seconds or 30 feet, that's my warranty. Man, I think that's solid. Let's get her fired back up. Sounds good. Let's try her out. Hopefully, when we hit the switch, this shaker deck will shake like it's supposed to. That was quite a week. Good week, yeah. Well, you tell if it's a good week. We were out there if, ripping pay dirt, so. If Dumit's leading with saying it's a good week, then it was actually a good week. Yeah. It was It was a good week for one of you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember running the plant. I hated it when I saw a truck coming with that blocky stuff. It's nothing <laughs> but a pain in the butt. Chris yeah. Gilderay, send it back. Yeah, send it send back. It back yeah. <laughs> Just send yeah. that one right over the edge with yeah, tailings. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing those days are long behind you, Chris. <laughs> yeah. How's it going down there at uh, Ken's? Oh, good. Just chugging away. I'd say we're about halfway through the bad cut right now, but. Well, I think we ought to throw a slucifer on there and see how the bad cut's turning out. Yeah, let's do Ready? it. Why do you want to do the bad stuff first? When you were a kid and people asked you, do you want the good news or the bad news, would you pick the good news or the bad news? Bad news. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Bad cut. Let's do her. Last week, at the bad cut, Slucifer delivered 192 ounces of gold. 60, 80, 100, 110, 112.85. There you go, living up to its name. That's not that bad. No. Worth over two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, it's not as good as the first cleanup, but which is odd because normally the first yeah, one isn't. Yeah. yeah, very good, but. But coming from you, I expect things to be backwards. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Next, time to find out if Parker's gamble running the bedrock was the right call. <laughs> All the fun stuff, blocky bedrock. You ready? Yeah, we know. Do it. <laughs> See what we got. Okay, here. You read it out. So far, Big Red's best gold way from Mud Mountain 30. has been just 190 ounces. 150, 180, 200, 230, 250. Keep going, 300, 350, 399.65. Keep her coming. 
So this is on top of 300 and change. We got another 50, another 70, another 84.45. You must know what those add up to. 484.1 ounces. No way. Yeah. Worth a massive $870,000, and finally, a change of fortune at Mud Mountain. Sweet, man, that was definitely worth the struggle right there. Is that sweet or what? That's gotta be the best cleanup Big Red's ever had. Yeah, yeah it is. For the week, you guys, this is pretty sweet. It's 596.95 ounces, <laughs> almost 600 ounce a week. Is that our best week this year? Oh, by far. Yeah, by far. In total, the Schnabel crew has brought in over a million dollars in gold this week. Now the million dollar question. Is there enough gold in this ground to make this cut worthwhile? On Indian River, Parker's foreman Mitch and the rest of the crew are eager to start chewing through pay dirt at Mud Mountain. Well, we are ready to finally do this. We got Big Red set up here. Here we go. This is the first dirt from Mud Mountain going through Big Red. Yeah, I don't know, being a first year guy, being tasked with operating Big Red and, uh, with such high stakes at Mud Mountain here, it's definitely stressful. Rookie miner Justin Fraser feeds the plant for the first time at Mud Mountain. Still running and we're making it work. And uh, so far, so good. We just got to keep it up. It's super hectic and everybody's feeling the pressure. supposed to be a really rich cut, so hopefully it also lives up to that expectation. It's a real good feeling. It's all hands on deck here. You just got to act so fast because Parker's supposed to be back today. It's been raining lots. So the road got super slick and gross and potholy. It definitely slows you down. We're going into fall and uh, conditions are getting pretty brutal. Not along with Mud Mountain and hauling out muddy pay all over the place. <laughs> See, <laughs> mud. Hey, Mitch, got a copy? Yeah, man, what's going on? Running some pretty sloppy material right now. I am struggling trying to get this pay through the plant. Yeah, man, I know it's nasty down here. We're getting clogged up. It's making a mess everywhere. We'll just hang tight. Give me a minute. Copy that. Thanks. Shut it down. Following heavy rainfall, Mud is now sloughing down the 60-foot-high walls of the cut, making the pay dirt on the floor wet. Parker is due to return any day. Mitch moves fast to solve the problem with operator Shane Gallup. We've got to fix the problem of the mud oozing out into the cut, and I think the only way to fix this issue is dig some bedrock, get the pay off the sides, and then we'll make a nice berm yep. to catch that mud. And then that way, as we're digging over on that side of it, it's just gonna be nice, clean, and dry. Then this cut will actually calm down and be a lot easier. We can easier. actually move forward instead <laughs> yeah. of two steps backwards. Exactly. The sooner we get a wall in here, contain this mud away from the center of the cut, the better off we're gonna be. To stop mud seeping into the cut, Mitch and Shane will use two 480 excavators to shift the pay from the muddy edges. Then, build a barrier to protect the cut from further sloughing. Hello, Mitch. We'll have to ramp this up here. Yeah, roger that.
So lots of things stacked against us here. And when it rains, well, all that mud makes a mess. And that's what we're dealing with right now, just trying to get a handle on it. You know, Mud Mountain's been a struggle from the start. And I am uh, probably more mentally drained than I am physically here, just trying to keep the train on the tracks. And we're done here. We've taken the bedrock here, we've built this berm, and the whole length of this, it's holding all this mud back, which is working really well. Out here, the cut, it's nice and mud free. So, probably should have been done a lot sooner, but better late than never. What up, what up? <laughs> hey, Mitch. Howdy. Hey, man. How's it going? Welcome back, young man. At Scribner Creek, it's time to find out if Mud Mountain has finally delivered. But first, the final gold from the good cut on the promised land. You've been on Slusa for all week then. Yes, sir. This is it, T-Bird, you ready? Here we go, last of the good cut. Hopefully it paid off. Twenty, forty, eighty, one twenty, one fifty, one eighty, two hundred. Oh yeah. Two sixty, yeah, keep her coming. Three hundred. 310, 317.4. Very nice. Worth $570,000. Yeah. I should leave again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good run. That's a really yeah. good run, yeah. yeah. Next up, the first Mud Mountain Gold. You look at all the troubles we've had to get to this point. I mean, all the hours we put on the dozers, everything it took to get all that mud moved. We got Big Red over there set up. Finally got some pay gravels through it. Yep. Was well, there any gold in it? Well, here you go. You want to count it? Yeah. What do we got here? Parker is hoping that Mud Mountain will deliver 10 ounces per hour of run time, five times what he usually gets from his other Indian River cuts. All right. 40. It wasn't very 60. full. 60. I don't like your angle that you're already at. Uh-oh. Yeah. 100, 120, 160, 165.45. Worth almost $300,000. Well, that's not bad, actually, considering how much bull we ran. Yeah. I mean, that's over two ounces an hour for the week, but I mean, is it five times better? <laughs> we won't know until we get into the heart of it a little bit. I mean, for an initial run, not bad. If we didn't have to move 60 feet yeah. of mud, it'd be great, <laughs> yeah. you know, but. It's not a bad first cleanup, man. So hopefully next week it's a little bit better. Yeah. Well, let's hope so. But actually, we, we had 482 ounces for the week. That's not bad at all. No. And for our season total now, it's 42.51. But things don't pick up. We're at pretty high risk of not beating last season. It's a good thing we've got such good people out there. We've got a great group of mechanics. We've got great managers. They're keeping things running and doing a really good job. Everybody's going to step up. There's lots of people stepping up. And they certainly don't need me running around the mine site. Parker Schnabel's streak of successful seasons depends on how much gold his trusted lieutenants can mine in the next four weeks. Well, right now, I have Tatiana feeding the plant froggy digging pay, and I'm doing coarse tailings. At the ugly cut, Tyson's under pressure to keep the gold coming in. You know, we only have a certain amount of days of sluicing left, and every minute counts right now. Loader operator Tatiana Costa feeds Slucifer 240 yards of pay dirt an hour. We currently only have one loader, so we, I'm really trying to do all I can to be nice and easy with this loader to make sure we do not break down because that will be catastrophic right now. A 
Hey, Tyson, you got a copy, Tyson? Go ahead, Gator Todd. Uh, there's something wrong with the plank. If you could come over here and uh, have a look. I'm on my way. Something's wrong with her pump. Hey, Alec, you got a copy, Alec? Yeah, go ahead. What's going on, Alec? So, we're not getting as much water out of the water pump as we should be. The fan was not quite spinning and the crankshaft was basically slipping on the belt. And then I noticed that stall in here. You can see like it's been wearing all night. Literally the belt just coming apart on us. Slucifer's 10 inch water pump is powered by a generator. A fan cools the engine. The belt driving the fan has worn so thin, it's no longer spinning the fan. The result, an overheated engine. We actually don't have a backup water pump. And it's pretty concerning, seeing as we got a whole cut to sluice out. What's up? So our plant pump's giving us some grief, wondering if we have a different pump line around that can steal and put into play. No, they just, the motor is pretty much shot on that other backup one. It's the, the fan belt on it, <clears throat> it's slipping and kind of overheating on us, so there need a new belt or a different pump or... And you're gonna lose four hours of sluicing if we have to send someone to town? Yep. The four hour round trip to Dawson for the new fan belt is going to cost Parker over $17,000 in downtime. Okay, I'll get on this. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I need to call in a favor. When can you be here? You can't afford for us to drag on any longer than it has to. Right now, all I know is we have a wash plant that isn't running. At the promised land, wash plant Slucifer is shut down with a broken water pump. What'd you do, Jordan? Went to get belts as quick as I could. <laughs> no <laughs> I didn't expect you back this fast. Alec and I'll just swap the belts out. Sounds good. And they're back online. Right on. Right on. Thanks, man. Done. No worries. Well, Jordan just flew in in a helicopter with the parts for the pump, so belts $20, delivery $2,000. Part of it's on, eh? Yeah, it's starting to go into the groove there. It'll get a little tough, but yeah, there she's going. There, how's that? We got her. Nice. All clear and tight on this side. You happy, Jordan? Yep. Once that's all set and good. We'll be closing. Get a man, Jordan. After two and a half hours of downtime. Give her tater tot. Wash plant Slucifer is back up and running. You got rocks? Oh yeah, we got lots of water. Chartering the helicopter cost Parker $2,000, but reducing his downtime by three hours has saved him over $10,000. Right on, boys. Yeah, yeah we're back sluicing. Hey there, youngster. What's happening? How was your day? Oh, not too bad. I mean, I didn't have to have a helicopter fly parts in for the water pump, so. <laughs> Don't get used to it, Tyson. <laughs> you want to see your ugly cut? You better take an ounce out of there because it's going to the helicopter company. <laughs> First cleanup of the ugly. The promised land's other cuts, the good, 
and the bad averaged 200 ounces a week. 40, 60, 80, 100, 108.15. It's not bad for a first cleanup. Worth almost $195,000, but half the average for the promised land. So Mitch, you had a smoking week last week, right? Next up, Mud Mountain and Big Red, where last week Mitch hauled in a season's best 600 ounces of gold. Oh, I gotta know, Chris, yeah. did we beat it again? Well, I tell you what, you have another two pan week. That yummy looking or what? That looks very nice. So there's your 400. Okay. And you got another big thermos out, so I'm feeling pretty good. You want to count this one, Mitch? Here we so go. So we got 10, 30, 40. Oh, is that all you got in there? 45.45. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't break records every well, week, man. I mean, so 445.45. Worth over $800,000. 450 ounces in a week, man. Yeah. You really can't complain. Yeah, you can. <laughs>